Alrighty, happy weekend everyone. Um, welcome to another BioBoost with Mr. Marinelli. Um, still haven't had many applications to um, produce the opening jingle from any musically talented students, so I am still keeping that open if you do wish to um, have your jingle featured on the famous um, BioBoost videos. But alas, until then, I'll give you this intro. All right, so what we're going to do is have a look at CRISPR, a rapid review, and really try and break it down into our bacterial CRISPR-Cas9 and our gene editing CRISPR, okay? And I think that's a source of confusion for a few people, so hopefully this will clarify things a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go and have a look at the first slide, uh, and that is the study design. Okay, so the function of CRISPR-Cas9 in bacteria and the application of this function in editing an organism's genome. Okay, so let me just get my pen up and hopefully this will work. So we've got the function of CRISPR-Cas9 in bacteria, that is one thing we're going to look at, and the application of this function in editing an organism's genome. Okay, so this is our first example. This is our second example of where we use CRISPR. Okay, so you have to know why CRISPR exists in the first place and then how we end up using it. All right, so we're going to go through all of these things. Okay, so students should understand the CRISPR Cas9 functions as a primitive adaptive immune system in bacteria. Okay, so this is why CRISPR exists in the first place and how it actually gives adaptive immunity to bacteria. Okay. Um, what I'm going to get you to do is pause the video here and read through these points um, because I'm going to be covering these during the video, but pause, read through the points and uh, make sure that you feel at least comfortable knowing what these basic points are about. Okay. All right. Hopefully you've done that and let's move on to the next slide. Okay. So what does it stand for? Clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. Okay, I might have omitted the word short when we went through it in class, but it doesn't change anything. Okay, so it's short repeated segments of DNA with each repeated segment separated by a length of space of DNA. Okay, so when we see the viral fragment and when it gets put into the bacteria's log of all the viruses that's come across in the past, it basically spaces it out with these repeat segments of DNA. And that, we'll see later, is to ensure that it won't cut its own DNA um, when it uses the Cas9. Okay? Cas9, speaking of, just means a CRISPR-associated protein. Okay? I've put their endonuclease because that's what it is. Um, and it's number nine. Okay? That's all it means. You don't need to know it in, in any other detail, just to know that Cas means CRISPR-associated. So it's a protein that's got to do with CRISPR. Okay? So the adaptive immunity in most bacterial organisms. So we're going to see that on the next slide a bit clearer. So what are we looking at in this photo? Well, we see that there is this happening in the past. Okay. So at some point, this bacteria has come across this virus um, in the wild. Okay. And this virus has come in. It's injected its DNA into the bacteria, okay? These other Cas proteins, you don't need to know about these, but these other Cas proteins come in, they know that this is foreign DNA, they land and use the PAM as their binding site and cut out a protospacer, okay? So protospacer is essentially the viral fragment that we're gonna store, okay? The Cas proteins then enter it into this library of viruses that the bacteria has come across in the past and that is called the CRISPR array okay this is why the CRISPR system exists okay because then what's going to happen is this bacteria is going to use proteins so we can see a promoter here and transcribe these spaces into RNA okay and that's going to form the precursors that end up becoming our guide RNA Okay, so when that Cas9 binds with the guide RNA, then it can go around looking for complementary sequences that are complementary 
to these spaces. Okay, and why that's important is because if this bacteria comes in again, then this Cas9 protein over here has the complementary bases and it is ready to go in and cut that viral DNA straight away. Okay, that's why it's an adaptive immune response. It sort of builds up this memory of all these different viruses that it's come across. Okay, notice as well that the, that the viral DNA has this thing called a PAM. Okay, it stands for protospacer. Okay, this is the protospacer adjacent because it's next to the protospacer motif. Motif means that it's regularly occurring. Okay, so viruses have this regularly occurring motif, this regularly occurring sequence, and that is not included in bacteria's DNA, which is why it's got these repeats that never have PAMs. So it will not cut its own DNA. Okay? So just a little bit on the PAM, we've already talked about it, but it's basically a target sequence um, that the Cas9 uses to bind to. Okay, so it's a really important sequence and the Cas9 will not bind to DNA if it does not come across this PAM. Okay, remember, proto means first, so the first spacer, adjacent, so it's next to that proto spacer, motif, it's a commonly occurring pattern. So it commonly occurs in the virus, but not in the bacteria. Okay, so that's how the bacteria avoids cutting its own DNA. Uh, nothing much here, this is just showing the process of how we use it in our cells, but we're gonna be going through that in a second. All right, so this is later. Okay, so in the past, we built up our memory, and now we've got our virus that's injected its DNA again at some point in the future, okay? This Cas9 protein has been floating around with its complementary guide RNA looking for viral fragments to cut, okay? That's all its job is. So what it does is it sees this PAM here, and finally, it's got a place where it can land, okay? So it's been landing on PAMs of this sequence all the time, but usually, when it goes to check whether this spacer, and okay, whether this spacer here is the same, it's not. Okay, so it just detaches and tries to find a new sequence to cut. Okay, but finally, it's come across the old virus that this was originally built for. Okay, so it binds to this PAM. It then checks to see whether this sequence here is complementary to the protospacer on this DNA fragment that's come in, okay? And in this case, it's a viral fragment. And in this case, it is the same viral fragment that it has come across in the past. So the guide RNA, this guide RNA here, is complementary to the protospacer. Now, when it detects that it is the same as the protospacer, it's complementary, it knows that it's come across this in the past, and it knows to make a cut, okay? And that cut occurs just a few bases upstream of the PAM. So, basically, the virus has come into the bacteria and the bacteria said, I've seen you before, I've got this Cas9 protein that's ready to cut you up whenever you come into the cell, and it goes and cuts it, okay? It's a pretty amazing system. When we do it, Okay, so that's what bacteria use it for. That's why this whole process exists. What we use it for is to edit DNA where we want to edit it. Okay, so basically what scientists do is they will design this sequence. Okay, so ignore the names. Don't worry too much about that. But this sequence here, they will artificially and synthetically make to be complementary to a gene that they want to cut in a human DNA. Okay, so maybe it's the gene for baldness. Okay, so they're going to go in because they know what the complementary bases are and artificially make that target sequence. Now, this sequence here, that little curly bit at the end, is like the stem of glasses. Okay, the lenses are what's doing the job, that's the target sequence, but the tracer DNA, this little curly bit here, basically just holds it into the CAS. Okay, because what we're going to need is basically a binding site so that CAS can become a complex with the target RNA and essentially form this 
uh, working group so that it can go in and cut DNA. Okay, so this is the important part. This just acts as an attachment point, point for CAS. Okay, so that's not really that important, but it is good to know that when you look at an image, you know that that's not the complementary part. Number one is the complementary part. So basically what this is showing is what I was just talking about. So what actually happens in a virus, and we can see that this CAS9 has been floating around, waiting, okay, for it to come across that same viral fragment. And what do you know? This virus has come in, injected its DNA, this binds to the PAM, and it cuts that sequence, okay? It doesn't do that to its own DNA because its own DNA has repeats that do not have PAMs, okay? It's as simple as that. How we use it, so these are the steps involved in editing a genome. So basically that scientist, oh, so that scientist basically synthesizes that single guide RNA and puts it together with a CAS protein. Okay, they know that that RNA sequence will be complementary to the target gene that they're looking to cut. Using that, and we write single guide, single guide RNA. Okay, that's what we think of. Think of S for synthetic, single guide, SGRNA, single guide RNA, synthetic guide RNA. Okay, but the proper name is single guide RNA. Okay, so it'll identify, along with the CAS, the corresponding DNA sequence within the host cell's genome and cuts both strands of DNA, just like it would on a viral fragment. Then, scientists can basically add a new piece of DNA, they can replace DNA, they can remove DNA, or add or delete single nucleotides. Okay, so it can be a really effective way to change genes, add genes, or remove genes. Finally, the cell detects and repairs that broken DNA. Okay, so things like DNA ligase will come in and rejoin those strands. Okay, hopefully with the change having worked. When the DNA is repaired, any changes are made uh, and integrated into the genomic DNA. So if you do this to a zygote, let's say, um, all subsequent cells will have that same change. Okay. Here's just a couple of applications that you could use it for. Okay, so important that you know um, why you might use it. Uh, and VCAR really want you to know, if you read those um, FAQs, these as particular reasons. Okay, so modifying crops to increase their nutritional value. Think of things like golden rice and increasing photosynthetic efficiency. So with uh, drier, hotter climates, we might be able to grow things a bit easier. Okay. Take note, there are lots of ethical implications, not gonna go into them in this video, but obviously um, in preparation for the SAC and for the, for the exam, um, you should know uh, a bit about those. You can stop this video and have a read through these if you want. And finally, this is just that same FAQ explanation page, um, just so you can have a look through and check, did we go through everything? Okay, we went through how it's a primitive adaptive immune system. We went through the fact that it's got repeats and spaces. We went through the fact that it is fighting against bacteriophages or viruses that the bacteria comes across, that it acts like scissors and cuts at a particular point when it has those complementary bases, um, that it will only cut if it's bound to a PAM first, and that that PAM is not present in the bacteria's own DNA. Okay, we can use it then as an editing technology by making single guide RNA that is complementary to the gene that we wish to cut. And finally, it's cost effective and very easy to use. Okay, that is it in a nutshell. It does not really get too much more difficult. Um, and if you understand those basics, then you will go a long way in um, understanding something that a lot of students find difficult. Okay, so I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, hopefully it helps you for the SAC and for preparing for the exam. And of course, uh, you're more than welcome to ask me any questions that you have along the way. Um, otherwise, have a fantastic day and hopefully you have enjoyed this episode of Mrs. McDonald and Mr. Marinelli's BioBoost. Have a great um, weekend and I'll see you next week.